We're about to go outside and see the spring planting, but I've done this video in a way that you can see befores and afters, uh, and also see the results of planting very differently to uh, what I did last year. So last year was my first year, and I planted a lot of seeds indoors very early, and this year I've done the opposite, and I've planted much later, and if I've sown any seeds in cell trays uh, or pots they've been two months later and so much later than a lot would be planting their seeds um, and I've mostly planted direct so there's a very stark contrast to the um, the method of starting the seeds between last year and this year and I wanted to do that because some of the seeds that I planted last year, I really felt that they were too early and they would have been much happy, happier to go direct. Now, like with any gardens, this is my second year, my second season of spring, summer. Um, but like with any gardens, you've got to learn how, what your, how your soil reacts, the climates or the microclimates within the areas that you've got to work with and what works and what doesn't. And I'm in an urban setting. Um, you're on the um, Urban Homestead Artist Channel. I'm in a suburban block in the east, east um, suburbs of Melbourne. And so that limited space has its advantages and disadvantages. So if you're on a lot of land, uh, sometimes it can be you're more difficult for your little seeds or your seedlings to cope because of open spaces. You've got um, more wind, you know, less shelter in a lot of situations. So creating those um, canopies and protection layers and windbreaks and everything is much easier to do on a smaller scale than it is on the larger scale. So I have that advantage being in an urban setting where we have fences and trees. Although in saying that, sometimes it can create more difficulty. So too much shade, um, for instance. And my name's Kayleen and I'm about to take into the garden to show you the seeds that I planted at the beginning of October, around the 7th to the 9th of October, which is about five and a half weeks ago. We're a temperate climate. I like to say that because it's hard when you're watching videos and you don't know what the climate that everyone's planting in. So it's a temperate climate. Um, so, and also we start planting usually seeds like tomatoes and that in September. Uh, so I'm kind of a month behind in some of the planting. So it was a month too early before the standard time last year, now I'm a month later. But what I did notice was when I, the volunteers, the volunteers in your garden often show you when things are meant to germinate or happy to germinate, the perfect timing, because nature knows. So I noticed that my seedlings, my tomato volunteers were popping up in the garden around the time I planted my seeds. So I may not be too late with those, but I am learning what likes to grow when and where. And that's what we do as gardeners, try and work out what likes to grow, where it likes to grow in our situation. So that's all we, we do. Okay, so I've just slipped in this video of me painting the daikon radish flowers in my garden recently while I explained to you how I started the seeds because we launched straight into the planting and I hadn't filmed it. So I'll just explain to you, it was pretty simple. Uh, this time I started my seeds inside damp napkins and they were put into a plastic container and sealed and then I used my heat mat and I popped them on the heat mat. Now, depending on what seeds that I was um, sprouting, I may have lifted some of them off the heat mat a little bit so they were a little bit cooler, but basically the container sat on the heat mat and about two, three days later at the most, they were pretty much all sprouted. Some took longer, but on average, most of the seeds sprouted within three days and then they were ready to go into the garden. It just speeds up the process. Um, some seeds would take a lot longer if you don't 
uh, if you didn't do it that way. Um, particularly the ones that, that like the heat, you could put them in the soil and um, in cell trays and they would sprout. But even then, they seem to sprout very quickly this way. So even though I was behind a month, it kind of, I gained some days in with some of the seeds. And for anyone wondering, this is an oil painting. So my intention with this channel is actually to combine it with the painting uh, and the drawing and the things that I, I plan to do artistically in my garden and via my plants and the things that I produce to celebrate them in other media as in oils and pastels and watercolours and all the things that I love to use as an artist. Now on to the planting. But please, if you enjoy these videos, please like and subscribe. And I would love, love, love if you could share any that are helpful to your friends. That would be fantastic. I very much appreciate that. Now, I have to try and keep these out of sun. I want to keep them moist. And I have this little gap in between the miner's lettuce and the endive. You can see I did try and grow marigolds, red cherry marigolds and beetroot. And they haven't grown, it appears, but I think actually the snails or something got to those ones. Uh, but I'm going to leave the tags in there because sometimes <laughs> things reappear and then you go, oh, what's that? <laughs> Although I'm starting to recognise things a bit better now, but I leave the tags in for a period of time just to make sure, just so that I know I've planted that, then that, then that. And if things start coming up, I know to move things out of the way in case it's not if it's too much in one spot. So I'm making a decision of what to go in here. It's a small space, but things could come over the side and ramble across the grass if I put something that did that right here. So I've got these candy roaster pumpkins. Uh, they're supposed to be really delicious. And I'm going to, as I plant, take what I think is the strongest seed each time. So if I get a run out of time or I decide not to keep all the seeds, I'm making sure that the strongest one goes in first. So I'm going to take this one, the longest root. Oh, it's doing a dance, it's happy. <laughs> and because it's a pumpkin, I'm going to make a group of three and I'm just putting up I've, I've done that so I don't and I'm gent oh so gently hang on let's make that a bit deeper oh so gently putting that in so I don't break it now what I don't want is air pockets that was perhaps a bit too deep if you ask if, if I was to be honest with you I'll just put that in. Come on, my little one. You do know they grow better if you talk to them. <laughs> and number three. Okay. Now, I don't normally do this. I normally start things with seedlings. Well, last time, what I say normally, this is only my second season. So, <laughs> I'm no expert. Um, but, I usually start things indoors early this time I've decided to wait till later when it's warmer the weather's better and go straight in the ground as soon as I can and try it that way although I've got enough seeds that I can also try some in pots should I want now remembering where those were I'm also going to put in a scarlet runner bean now these need support which isn't here yet but my husband's going to put some square cages or frames around these beds and i've got a frame already up here that 
these things I'll train them up and over in that direction to so that they can grow and this is it the little seedlings or two out of the three that survived the slugs the trombogeno did not survive um, five and a half weeks on so the scarlet runner bean behind there is coming through it's a bit slower than the others that i put in the garden i think because it's in the shade and it could have been nibbled on and it's persisted and that's the miner's lettuce behind which is going to seed and i've conveniently placed that container hanging on the side to catch its seeds these are beans that i've collected from my from last year's beans so gently 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 okay I have to really watch where I've put it and then put a tag I'll put the tag in the back because I usually do it in the back so Scarlet Runner Candy Roaster and that is a gap now filled because we don't want gaps in the garden so moving along here you can see there's another little gap under here wasted space you can tell it needs something in it because the grass is going in there and it by the looks my little marigold here sorry by the looks that is survived so I've obviously put one under here and it's being sheltered so let's go get that tag um, and move it there and then I'll put another bean here and I really do this will eventually come out because this is a pass um, a radish that's I'm um, collecting seeds from actually no it's not that one can come out there's one next to it I'm collecting seeds from and so that will become a bigger gap in there so I will I think that's some worm castings I've put in I will put an, another scarlet runner in there too so we'll push a hole in better than using our hands and get the next biggest biggest one let's cover them up it's not good them sitting in the sun really but I should have brought my hat and put my hat over it and put that little seed in there and put pinching the soil together like that underneath and there we go now I'm putting that there to remember where it is and we'll get another tag because I'm pretty sure I made a few tags and the tags I just save yogurt containers or ice cream containers things like that cut them up and use a, a proper garden texture marker to make my tags and this is the scarlet runner much bigger than the one on the other side um, we've we've got i think that's ear, earwigs that are having a crack because they do come in and eat on the rhubarb leaves so i'd say that's what that is that's um i'm fighting against when i plant direct so i need to put i put some traps out the other day but i would need to put some other traps but you can see this scarlet runner beans much bigger than the one around the other side and and can i say the the um, marigold that we moved is gone because my husband put some irrigation in for me into this bed and he's dug in here so I'm quite surprised that the scarlet run scarlet runner bean is still there uh, but we lost our marigold so so that's fine and this is the um, daikon radish and you can see that where the seeds are now five and a half weeks on I'm just saving this one with a few seed pods on it um, half of the plant was broken off when hubby put the irrigation in and so I'm just hanging on to these few seed pods in amongst 
the um, current there and I'm hoping I get some to say, to replant there. So that's one little area filled up and I need to go around all those empty spaces. I'm going to put cucumber, cucumbers over there and all those empty spaces and fill them up. So next is the Armenian cucumber. These grow really big uh, but unlike regular cucumbers they don't go bitter as they get older and bigger. Now I did try and grow a couple of these last year didn't get them to grow much. Uh, so I'm going to try again this way. I'm growing them a little bit different a little bit later and I'm going to put them in here because we've got this area here there's no supports but I'm gonna ask my husband to build something up and over that so they can come up grow up here and over that water tank uh, which is an area that is wasted and also the grass gets really bad here so I figured if we've got something growing over there shading this area I might be able to control this a bit more if it's growing up top like on the roof and it might be a little bit easier to it might serve two purposes and help me with the weeding a little bit too again I collected these from just a, few, a couple that did grow and I didn't end up eating them I just saved them for seed because I knew it was getting to the end of the season. Now, this is how viable the seed was. 100% germination rate. And I get high germination rate doing it this way. So every single one of them, this is three days growth. Every single one has grown. So there's plenty here and I actually don't need them all. So I'm going to put a few in here. So if I get any pest damage or whatever they take a few out doesn't matter and I will watch them and whatever's the strongest ones I will keep and the rest I could probably just snip off um, so when you grow when you've got plenty of seeds it's really good you don't have to worry about wasting seed or you can set them off in a race <laughs> and see who wins so I'm not sure if I counted correctly but I think I've planted about 10 so I planted them in a row so I could kind of can remember where they are and in two rows um, but I did about seven one and three in the other but I've planted them all along here and I've got about that much still left over but I've put a tag at the start and the finish and I will give this a water uh, because they are just under the some surface of them I've left with their little seed the soil. Just popping through. and some I, I buried which was probably too deep but again, I like to experiment with all these things. So they'll probably um, be the ones that grow, but let's push a few more boundaries. <laughs> now the five week update. This is where I planted the Armenian cucumbers. We had some cold snaps <laughs> and I think they just went, nah, we're not growing. They could be still in there, but I've got a feeling the cold, cold, um, upset them so because I know that those seeds were pretty viable well they were 100% viable I'm going to plant them direct now now that the the soil is heating up the weather's getting we're having some hot days and everything so I'm going to put some more in there I'll plant them direct I won't pre-sprout them and we'll see how they that goes now in the interim I've got all these little babies popping up here self-sown babies now I'm looking at it because I'm learning these things the vein the red vein in this tells me it could be the red vein sorrel which I can't remember planting in here I've got them meters away I don't know if I've spread seeds or that's a type of rocket because I have had rocket in here so but I mean the red vein tells me it's not rocket but who knows? So I've got something growing in here already. Um, if it is sorrel, I will end up moving them. And I, these are very good for uh, weed barriers to put along edges of gardens and stop um, pesky 
grasses coming into the garden so I will definitely borrow them if they they turn out to be that I'm looking at the leaves coming through here and it's almost looking like rocket though you see that so I'm wondering if that is rocket so I'll plant some more fresh Armenian cucumbers I'm not going to quit on that it is the time to be putting cucumbers into nice warm soil now and our weather's been really good. It's, um, it's, we've had the warm and then we've had rain. So I haven't had to water so much, which is really nice to have the, the uh, soil heating up, the plants having a chance to take off and, but s still get plenty of water uh, while they're young. Um, so it's, we've had a little bit of hail that didn't seem to affect my my plants are fairly sh sheltered amongst each other um, but yeah we'll, we'll try again with those now we'll speed things up we're going to put these little zucchinis in spaces and a few more and then i'll get back and i'll quickly flick you around so you can see where i've put it okay i'll put these back inside those ones for now but i've planted three one here I've put them all under bottles just to protect them from the slugs and snails at the minute. One in there and that's to protect them from my gum boots because that's right on the edge of the garden and one up here. So this will grow up all this all that I've planted in here near it is kind of understory stuff it, it'll be quite happy to grow and quick to grow the beetroot and the sal salad burnet that'll all be happy under here and if I put lettuce in things like that that can still happily grow and we'll fill in this hopefully quickly and the five week update this one is a nice size very happy there um, it has avoided too much pest damage it's had a something's had a bit of a nibble but it's growing strong The other one that was down there is gone because again, my husband did the irrigation. He's dug a big hole and it's all through here under, underneath the soil here. And so he dug it out. So that one's gone, but it probably would have grown. And the third one here is quite happy as well. So I'm looking forward to trying those zucchinis. I haven't tried them before. Maybe I can take this one out. It's risky, but now the seed part's off. I'll give it some. Oh, look at you! Oh, look at bug. Kill. Right, I'll leave that there in case I need to put it back on. Okay, so the Coke bottles I didn't put them back on. So I've showed you the 12-day update and the five weeks update. I didn't put them back on. I did put them over some things and I lost some plants. So you've just really got to be careful that they don't overheat. And it's a catch-22. If you put the lid on, the slugs can climb in it. But if you, uh, sorry, if you leave the little cap off, they can climb in. But if you leave it on, they can get too hot in the sun. So you've kind of just got to watch them. Um, sometimes collars are better that, that leave it open and, and you know the pests are a bit lazier or less inclined to get in but they still can get in. Uh, at, I did uh, one or two night crawls, not many. I didn't find a lot of big slugs. I found lots of little ones but I'm not, not a lot of big slugs. That could be because we've got our blue tongues that return around this time of the year which is wonderful and they come and clean up the garden of the snails and that's one of the reasons I just hate using any chemicals. Chemicals destroy your soil, um, create more problems in the long run um, but sometimes you do need to pull out something for control and so once I have put down sparingly because you don't actually need a lot of it very sparingly iron oxide which is a mineral and it's not one like those heavy chemical um, baits it's just actually a mineral that goes into the ground that's fine 
um, so I've put that out. I still have them. I still have slugs and snails, so I squash them when I see them. Um, if I notice too much damage, I'll come out at night again, but I haven't so far. The thing that I do have issues with is the um, earwigs. They chomp quite quite a lot of the leaf, and if you get too many of them, they can create a lot of damage. So I make traps. Uh, I'll do a video on those traps because they are very handy to have if you have earwig problems. So I'll do a video on that. So back to the planting. Now the candy roasters I mentioned before, they are not going to climb. I correct myself. In my mind, I'm I was saying to myself, I'm going to put a trombuccino in here. So which I still will, because these can grow up over the edge and smother the grass. Um, and the trombuccino I can grow up over the structure. And that, as you can see, they're really ready. They want to be growing. So I've put them further back in there because they'll grow up higher and above the pumpkin. Um, but they are, they're sheltered back there too, but I'll have to watch the endive doesn't grow over it. Um, I am picking in the endive now, so I'll make sure that I keep that back away from it. So it still gets the sun, but um, hopefully it's got protection as well. Now these little guys are small pumpkins, small winter squash called kakai or kakai, K-A-K-A-I. I'm going to put a couple of those, in fact I might just, I was thinking I might get one of the, the, the younger ones as well. I'm going to put three down in between the heater and the water tank. That's an area that um, tomatoes have self-sown in there in, uh, last year. Uh, it's fairly bare soil and I've just thrown greenery, like just chopped and dropped over it to cover the soil yesterday. So I'm going to plant into that soil and let them grow and come through this path. Uh, that's assuming they creep. If they don't, they'll just fill up that gap and keep that full with food instead of weeds. So I've picked a couple of strong ones and that little one that's just started. And I'll put it in a little group in the center of that. Oh, I can smell that <laughs> Vietnamese mint. Now the reason I've done that, I've covered up a little bit, so I've popped them in there, is because I do get a mouse in here. They go after the pepinos here. Um, so if I get a mouse in here and they spot a nice yummy nutty pumpkin seed <laughs> poked up from the ground, they could just disappear. So one's under the ground and two are slightly above the ground and fingers crossed they grow. Um, if they don't, obviously I will have to start them in a pot before I... Um, I mean it's risky. <laughs> But let's see how we go. But just to be extra safe, extra sure. They're over there. I'll put one here just in case. And then I'll let it run that way if it does move. And we'll put this little pot on top. <laughs> For now, it's just under the soil. This one, it did have a, about an inch long root. But we'll put it under that pot for now and hope the mice don't find it, or our mice. I mean, there might not be any mice there now. We've been, we've caught a few, but um, yeah. Five weeks on, and the Vietnamese mint's just huge again. Um, and this is all the stuff that's died back, but no joy, nothing in there, but a little bit of grass. So we'll wipe them ones out. So sometimes it's worth seeing what doesn't work for someone else. And that pot, I will never do that again. That pot had way too many holes. And pretty much the next morning, I think it was, or the day after, there was no plant left. Something had got in there and chomped away. They couldn't get to that, <laughs> but they could get to that. So that was not a good idea. Okay, so in between the asparagus, I wanted to grow something in here and a lot of low ground cover stuff. Now I've got the stakes 
that are still in the ground from growing tomatoes here last season. So I'm going to grow, I think I'll grow some cucumber this time. And that says dad's cucumber because my dad was able to grow cucumber prolifically on his farm in his garden and I saved the seeds from those very very happy cucumbers I made lots of pickles didn't have to actually grow them because he gave me so many um, but he was here today and he struggled to get his germinating this year so I've just given him some of these second generation seeds from him back and I'm going to stick some in here and see if I can grow them like he did. But look at this. Not a minute too soon because you see this? This is about, it wants to take the seed head off. It's got the greenery. Those leaves, they're the first leaves trying to come out. So this is three days on heat in those tissues. And this one's ready to be a plant. So I'm putting three here. Even though I had a, have a stake, I'm not too concerned because my dad, when he grows them, he doesn't even stake his. He just lets his ramble over the ground. And he brought in bags and bags for me. So you don't necessarily have to stake them. So I was very careful. You see this? I was very careful just here to give it not to bury it too far because it's trying to come up come up like that and open up its leaves so let's give it a chance to do that so i watered them with some collected rainwater which is very thoughtful of me <laughs> but the container i used <laughs> was a little bit too heavy-handed and i washed some of them out <laughs> so i've just popped them back in and that tells me i really need to put something over them that's not going to obstruct them growing up but yeah, we'll protect them from any heavy rains because we've had heavy rains. So, so they stay in the ground because their roots haven't had a chance to spread out yet. Won't take long, but we could get rain. So although we are meant to have fairly fine, coolish weather, mild weather for the next few days, so they might be fine, but let's not risk it. I'll put something over that and they will be safer. Now here we are again with the update, the five week update, and there's nothing there. Now, can I say, I think it's the same problem though. I mean, I did wash them out a bit, but I, I, I think it was the wrong time. Now I would still start the seeds that way, but later. So I, you know, you experiment and you find what works well where. The weather patterns do change a little bit but I will make it a note to actually plant the cucumbers direct in November instead of the month before. But in saying that, look, look how thick <laughs> my asparagus is. Like it's just huge. So this, the asparagus are happy. <laughs> and that's the other section that I planted in. So I will plant some direct today and see what happens. So I'm going to take advantage of my old ugly back veranda for climbing space and I've put one, two, three trombocinos in here and that's used the last of those seeds up. So we'll see if they'll grow and there. And when I'm finished with the wet tissue paper, just dig a bit of a hole, push it into the ground and feed it back to Mother Earth. One, two, three, all eaten. <laughs> so I started some in a tub later and they're all growing. So this is a polystyrene tub I've got on my veranda. So it's acted as a nursery uh, for backup seeds. And I've got a, a few things growing in there and um, too much for, for the tub, but it's been great for these backups. So in case they don't come through, and there's a little bit of pest damage in there, but you, you really don't fight the pests like you do out in the garden. So I'll be able to replace the trombocinos 
that uh, with that nice big one there and um, you know <laughs> that's my backup now as this is perennial leeks so this is a bed that probably won't get touched much I'm gonna put another perennial in there so I'll put the scarlet runners which lasts for at least seven years uh, in there and put a couple of those beans in there that'll be nitrogen for the area i don't know if beans are a good companion for leeks but i should have probably looked that up but anyhow i'm going to put them in and see they grew next to my walking egyptian onions last year so i think we should be okay so i went for the last three seeds one well, i got more inside sprout um germinating anyhow but one two three a uh, little group of three. I like groups of three. And I might just even put that back over it just to keep the soil moist. And here they are. One, two, three. Quite happy. This one's starting to climb. So I need to give it something a bit more to climb up behind there now. And they're growing quite happily next to the leek. Bit of kale. Um, and the leeks have all got little babies coming up. Look, the perennial leeks. How many am I going to have from that? From one plant? Probably about a dozen or more. Okay, I'm going to put two more in, or two. I'm going to put the corn in and the, and the remaining candy roaster in. If you haven't seen my last video, go and check out this area. This was a place where you shouldn't be a I'm going to grow anything really. Um, but check out the last video, the tour, and I explain a bit more how I got this area in a, in a way that I can grow some things. Mostly shade loving things. It does get pretty hot in summer though, um, but I'm going to try the pumpkins. I don't know if it's ideal or not for them. But because it is a very weedy, you know, an area I haven't got to fully yet. Whoops. Um, if I've got pumpkins rambling through here, it's, it's helpful. Again, you hear me saying about the weeds. The weeds have been my biggest issue to start with. It was my biggest um, challenge because my the, every area that I was that was available to me was completely overrun with difficult weeds, you know, challenging weeds, oxalis and grasses that you know make you turn in your sleep. Um, so I I've come to think about plants in a very different way that they can serve more than one purpose, more than just feeding you. Um, they can serve as shelter for the other plants, feeding the soil, suppressing weeds, just um, so many benefits from planting them. So that's the last of those three. Again, tissues go in the ground go and candy roaster be blessed and grow now I must admit I have my reservations about pumpkins in a shaded area because really this does get a lot of shade here you can see the New Zealand spinach and geraniums and you know other things like that grow well just near the tree here and again I am, am improving the soil but it's not prime soil yet we've got this massive New Zealand native I'm in Australia but this is a New Zealand native growing here it's a nitrogen nitrogen fixing tree which is great um, but it does shelter a lot as well as my neighbors have a lot of natives that are sheltering this area and we have a cherry tree just near that tree over there so I use this area to grow things that I think like shade like some canna lilies to chop and drop which I will eventually replace with edible cannas and now I know that they grow there 
So they were free ornamentals that I've put in there. I've just recently planted the yacon there and, if, and further down um, there is walking Egyptian onion babies growing happily there so the onions do okay. There's potatoes that are growing there but the birds are kind of lifting them up <laughs> out of the crown so you can see the potato there. So there's different things that are improving the ground but not growing, some growing, some not growing. So the pumpkins did not grow in this area. That could have been the heat because it was cold and shaded. Uh, but the yacon looks like it's happy there. I transplanted them a couple of weeks ago and they're, they're looking quite happy there. But other things are just not growing in there. Um, up further, I've, that's another yacon. Uh, what have we got here? Nothing there, but that's a yacon right next to it, all happy. Um, that big plant there and then violets are happy there and we've got a choco vine that struggled at first but now it's taken off in fact it's got so high that it's reaching over across to the neighbor's gate so i'm going to chop it at the top and let it sprout out and thicken up um, but keep the height down on that for now that was a temporary thing because I didn't know where to put it, so I've just put it in there to see if it'll grow there, which it did. So I've tried different seeds, and um, some have grown, some have failed. That's another walking Egyptian onion, and I had put there... Uh, oh, that's the elephant, sorry. That is the elephant garlic, which grew much better elsewhere, but it's growing. So I've got more green things in the ground, and the more green things in the ground, the better the soil will get, so... I'll be giving that choco a trim today. That's on my to-do list. Over on the opposite side, there's either the house and it's dry and hard pan clay. It's really hard there. So there's a couple of comfrey that I've put in there. So I say this to say that don't stress about if your seeds grow or not, your plants grow or not, there's a new, new Zealand spinach growing out onto the weedy path. Um, any excess goes to the birds, so it's all good. So this area, there's not a lot in it. We had the fences done, so I had to keep it pretty free of, of preciousness. Um, I'd already started broad beans. So some survived the builders and I've kind of rescued plants out of them, moved them. So there's not a lot in here apart from the salvia which grows, this stuff grows very tall but the wattle birds love them as they do the wattle brush. <laughs> when I chopped them down I felt so sad there was these wattle birds out there fossicking around on the chopped up pieces looking for their flowers. <laughs> it felt so mean. But anyhow, this is a plant that just keeps on keeping on. So they've bounced back up. I may find that, that I don't want all of them. But this is the area. I'm gonna have a crack at growing corn. This is sweet corn that I got from a food swap collective, the Dandenong, Dandenong Collective. And a lady had saved many generations on like seeds that have been collected year after year from her pop. And apparently the juiciest, sweetest corn you ever met. So Kayleen now has the juiciest, sweetest corn you ever met. And hoping the neighborhood whatever critters don't work that out so I'm going to plant them they are really really wanting to grow this one in three days is already throwing up its shoot so in the ground we go and that is my planting for today so thanks for watching I hope this inspires you 
just start a few seeds and in three days you can be planting a ton of food and if it doesn't all grow it doesn't all grow but even if a percentage of it grows that's still a ton of food and we all could do with a little bit more self-sufficiency and you don't need a lot of land to do it okay so I planted in a block about 17 corn that's how many had germinated the others haven't as yet or won't um, I put a stick I've put a tag up one end and a stick down the other so I have to go make some more tags and I've put about 10 Armenian cucumbers around this tree because they'll be able to grow up the pineapple guava um, in saying that I know that this area I have a lot of trouble with snails and that so putting 10 in <laughs> I just as long as one grows <laughs> but the seeds are germinated so I'm using them so five weeks later coming down here we can see that I'm not sure how many have popped through but they've popped through and there's we've got pests trying to have a go at them which they did last year with the popping corn I grew um, this is sweet corn but I grew the beautiful multicolored um, gem what's it called you have the rainbow colored popping corn and there was pest damage on it when it was younger too but they just bounced back uh, it's now time for I really need to give these a feed so they can really kick off I had to quickly show you the glass gem corn they're just so beautiful I save seeds and I've dried them because I want to actually feature them in a painting they're so beautifully ornamental they're worth growing just to have in your home as a countryfied little ornament some plants are just so beautiful the pineapple guava has been netted now and under there was where I put the cucumber and again none none have survived by the looks so we'll just wipe them off I think the Armenian cucumbers but I did have a volunteer tomato pretty sure that's a cherry tomato that popped up so that's a bonus and I think there's another one down there actually under the banana there's a banana here there's another one down there and before I go inside, because I've just about had enough, we're just about out of seeds. The remaining seeds, I'll go back inside and give them fresh um, tissues. I'll rinse this out and put them in this container because I don't want any garden soil going in the other container. I don't want anything to potentially contaminate the other seeds. So that's what I'll do. I'll clean them up, pop them in new uh, tissue paper in the container until I'm ready to deal with them. But I've got four little of the zucchini, I don't know how to, is it rondonice, rondonice um, variety. I've got three with roots and one without. So I'm just going to use these pots that had basil in, that obviously the basil's decided to give up on me. So I'm going to throw them in pots for now. Uh, what's that on the end? That probably is comfrey, so it's a bit risky putting it in there. Oh, I can feel something under there. Let's not do that. I'm just going to put it right behind it. Put it right behind it. And this seed hasn't sprouted. But you never know. Let's chuck it in just in case. There we go. Now I really am finished. And the update on these are nope, nope, nope. There was actually comfrey in that one. Uh, so that's coming up. So that's fine. But yeah, I think the slugs. This is, this is my worst area. And I think they got nibbled. So... Uh, anything like that that's out here I'm gonna have to start inside or you know on my veranda so that's not oh I've got blueberries happening it's one of the birds I haven't found that 
So there you go. Now today I nicked out and there's a local lady who had little seedlings. Um, some are only small but some are a bit bigger. And so I've grabbed some cantaloupe and um, cucumbers just in case. So I've got those backups because I really do want to be eating those in my garden. So if the seeds don't take, um, you know, I'll put some more in this week. If they don't, I've got those as backup. I've just got to protect them from pests. And of course, I'm glad I backed up some of them, like that one that was under the pot. This is a great example how things grow differently. These beetroot were planted 10 months ago and they're only just getting going. That's because of the lousy potting mix that was put in. It just didn't grow. And yet other things that shouldn't have been growing, grow. My strawberries are going great, but just underneath the strawberries are capsicums that didn't die over the winter. They've soldiered on in Melbourne and um, now they're flowering for more capsicums this year. So some seeds take off easy, like the sage here, and some things struggle to grow. But you never know if you don't have a go. Now be sure to watch the next video because the very next day we moved our wire bed, what I call my wire bed, and we did a complete transformation of the backyard. It looks so different now. So make sure you watch the next video and after that I'll give you another spring update. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.